except I can't ever say killer because we're vegan. So we're, we're creating really good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, we're not. Okay. Hey, Empowered Vegan Lifers. Ella here with my co-host, hey, Stephanie. Hey, Ella. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you. What's going on? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not too much. I'm going to try not to talk about the weather. I'm going to try really hard, but as you can see, I have my hat on. You do. So I'm getting ready for some, you know, real, real storms are coming in today. Kind of excited about it. I really like the red toboggan. Thank you. Thank you. I really like it too. You know, my kids think it's a flashback to the nineties. Remember (laughs) what maybe you don't Ah. remember because you were like probably six. I I was not, I was (laughs) nineties. I was born in 80. So nineties, I'm, I was teen. Come on. Yes. Well, that was like the height of my glory. Like I love the nineties and I've never quite gotten over not dressing just a little bit you know, yeah. Grunge just a little bit. Me too. So yeah, I love my toboggan. Yeah. Well, what else is going on? I don't mean to toot my own horn. I love when you toot your own horn, but I'm kind of about to do it. I know (laughs) (laughs) I'm kind of a culinary genius and I have to tell you, I think we've mentioned this before. Have we mentioned pumpkin tofu? I don't remember. Well, anyway, find it. It's, it's a little bit I've never higher. Even heard of it. Yeah. It's a little bit higher in calories, but it's made from like the seeds of the pumpkin. So it's but not it, made from soybeans at all. No, no. It's made from the pumpkin seeds, I guess. I don't really know. It's made ah, from pumpkin. Yes. I think I may have seen that. Yes. Oh my gosh. But no, I haven't tried it. So it, it's kind of a, it has kind of a green tinge to it. So it looks kind of weird, Hmm. but it's kind of already pressed. So, you know, Hmm. you just have to press it for just a second. So yesterday I coated it in spices and put it in the air fryer. Hmm. And then I made a peanut dipping sauce. Mm. I think I got one bite and my kids loved it. And I, I call that a culinary success. They're a little bit more apt to eat the pumpkin tofu than the tofu tofu. And I, I, it doesn't really taste that much different, but I think it's just the idea of tofu. You know, I think people have a negative connotation sometimes. I do. And I mean, that's definitely changing quickly, but I remember back in, talk about back in the day, back in (laughs) 1995, when I was uh, at my height of my tofu eating days already, um, yeah, my, my dad used to make it and it was back then, like, nobody had heard of it. And if somebody did say tofu, it was like this scrunchy gross face, you know, that people would make Ew, tofu gross. Yes. Which I kind of get because plain tofu is just, there's, I mean, it's, it's not gross to me, but of course it has no flavor. It's just kind of there. Yeah. It's kind of nothing, which makes it so cool because it soaks up whatever flavor and talk about tooting your own horn. I'll toot your horn because you are, you are one of the most creative um, people I've ever met in terms of your sauces and your flavor profiles. And Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I love to be in the kitchen. You know, I, I love to chop vegetables. That's like my Zen. So I chop vegetables every day and I, I love to cook. It is it's one of my favorite things to do. And I do, I do get fancy with the spices. So you do. And do you know where people can actually find that? Some of your recipes, we have a, a new guide out. It's like a hundred pages and it's got a Stephanie sauce section. (laughs) Specifically, (laughs) it says Stephanie's sauce section. Oh, that's so funny. (laughs) So you guys, if you're listening and want to get some of these infamous, uh, vegan, sauces, most of which are are cruelty-free. Yes. Most of them are (laughs) cruelty-free, but (laughs) they are also um, oil-free. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, pick, pick that up. I think we're about to go in for like on sale for like seven bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a no brainer. That's worth it for the sauces alone. Alone. I know we should just have a sauce book, but we just like to do things big here <laughs> at Vegan Life Coach Academy. We do. Yeah. Come get saucy with us. 
saucy with Stephanie. Stephanie oh saucy. Gosh. Saucy. Oh Stephanie. my gosh. We are creating some killer marketing right now. I think we are. Except I can't ever say killer because we're vegan. So we're we're creating really good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, we're not. Okay. Um, <laughs> Speaking of vocabulary, that's so funny because I've got my whole calisthenics crew now. We're changing, we're changing the have I talked about this? I might have talked about this too, but we're changing all the names of some of these these exercises because some of them are really freaking awful. Like the one very foundational move on the bars in calisthenics is called skin the cat. Oh. How awful is that? That's really that's not a great. No, no, no. So, um, I'm calling it peel the banana and I love that. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's fun to watch people there. They're starting to adopt this new language. So I'm like <laughs> overhauling, um, uh, the language the cruelty-free language. I love it. In my love it so yeah. Uh, Stephanie, what are we talking about today? We are talking today about owning our impact. Hmm. This is interesting. We haven't yeah. really talked about it in that way before. Right. Yeah. What's, what made you decide on this topic? Well, and this will be kind of a repeat, but, um, Eva had a project this week and she had to choose a persuasive topic. And wouldn't you know it? My girl chose climate change and she actually came home and she had this little existential crisis about what can one person do? And I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, we're not doing this at 11. And then I thought, started thinking we're not, do- we're going to throw that away and we're going to own our impact. That's mm-hmm. what we're going to do. So that's what this is about. I'm intrigued. Go Eva. She's <laughs> always inspiring us. <laughs> she is. She's awesome. awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, get to it. It is time for your daily dosing of self-coaching with Stephanie. Indulge me just a little. <laughs> I love being a mom. And frankly, I can't be humble when it comes to my kids. If you've been a longtime listener, you know my yo- youngest, Eva. She's 11 and quite possibly the most fabulous human being on the face of the planet. <laughs> she recently took on a project for her language arts and science classes. And the assignment was to write a persuasive essay on a topic in science that they felt strongly about, and then create a presentation from that essay to give her fellow students as well as her teachers. The topic she chose was climate change. (laughs) Could this mom be any prouder? (laughs) I don't think so. So after writing her essay, she asked for help with her presentation. And I have to tell you, she was more than a little defeated. She said, mom, it's just too big for one person. How can anyone make any changes that matter? Why try to persuade anyone to do anything when it just won't matter? And you know what? I could relate. I know you feel me when I look at the world's biggest issues and wonder how I can even make any sort of headway, any sort of lasting impact when I'm just one person. The word insurmountable (laughs) comes to mind, but right behind those thoughts come three little words, own your impact. A guided meditation I return to often is presented by David G on Insight Timer. And the message is always really clear to me. I'm never powerless. Though I may be one, I'm not immune to the responsibility of doing what I can, where I can. I am the author, director, lead character of my own life. And with every breath, I have an impact in my world. If it's to be, it's up to me. (laughs) And it is so important that I own that impact. In talking with our clients and others in the vegan community, I know the world often seems so heavy. But what I also know is that we have far more ability to make a difference than we believe that we do. Small, consistent steps have a lasting impact, even if they may not be noticeable to us when we make them. 
You see, we have a tendency to discount our actions as being not enough to make a difference. And in discounting our actions, we often throw ourselves into that destructive pattern of all or nothing thinking, which paralyzes us from taking further action. Can you relate? (laughs) But time and time again, history proves us wrong. Let's go back to the global issue of climate change, for example. Why is climate change a global discussion with companies, governments, and communities making widespread green initiatives priorities? Because Al Gore won a Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in bringing about the awareness to climate change? Because Leonardo DiCaprio made an Oscar speech heard around the world about climate change? Maybe partially. However, the efforts of these two famous people would have been rendered meaningless if it hadn't been for the individuals who for decades have led the grassroots efforts of activism. Thousands of community members around the world chose to own their impact, do what they could, where they were, with what they had to bring about change. Their small, consistent efforts collectively led to global awareness and movement. And yet, none of these individuals likely saw the fruits of their impact. These ordinary people, who we will likely never see or celebrate, created the foundations for immense shifts in our thinking, awareness, and actions about the environment on a global scale. And for every change maker on the world stage, there are millions of individuals who make a difference just by making simple acts of conscience in their everyday lives. And this is done by owning your impact, by being ever mindful of those small, consistent actions that you make daily As a matter of personal ethics and conscience, you contribute to the world's good. You own your impact with every choice you make. As vegans and vegan curious, we own our impact with every meal we choose, with every pair of shoes we buy, through compassion and sustainability. We own our impact with every conversation we have regarding our choice to live in compassion for all beings. As citizens of our communities and of our world, we are responsible to own our impact. So let's take this to a very practical place. How do you own your impact? How does this work? First, throw out your perfectionism and all or nothing thinking. If this world needs you, and it does, you cannot be bothered with irrational goals of perfection, becoming paralyzed by the feeling that if you can't solve the problem in its entirety, you cannot do anything about it at all. Perfectionism leads to ineffectiveness. To dive a little bit deeper into this, check out episodes 45 and 53 on taking care of perfectionism and on all or nothing thinking. Great strategies there if you find yourself paralyzed by these. Second, choose speaking up rather than staying silent. Find your voice. This is so much more than just vocalizing your position. Your voice is your courage, determination, your authenticity. If you're having trouble connecting to that, start by asking yourself three questions. Number one, how do you wanna show up in the world? Really design what you want that to look like. Number two, what is your deeper why? Connecting to that deeper why provides purpose. And number three, what is holding you back from using your voice? This is what is keeping you from using your voice and owning your impact. Next, see your daily living as an extension of your purpose. It is with the small, consistent choices that create our impact. We own that by living in line with what we value most. Every word you say has the potential to cause connection. Every meal you eat allows you another opportunity to live compassionately. Remember, you are the author, director, and hero of your own story. 
By taking that responsibility and living with intention, you are owning your impact. Finally, choose to do something that will make your impact real and visible to you. Volunteer at an animal sanctuary, join a climate change activist group and engage, teach your children about your values, buy with purpose by choosing products that are vegan, sustainable, and cruelty-free, donate your money to organizations who mis whose mission aligns with yours. By getting involved, you are seeing your impact in ways that allows you to become connected to the change, thereby creating further desire to continue. The truth is everything we do impacts the world around us in some way. It may be directly or indirectly. Either way, not claiming ownership or responsibility doesn't negate that impact. It only amplifies the risk of having a negative one. Therefore, we must take ownership of our significance in the lives of others and the world around us. You are powerful. Beyond your imagination, you have meaning and purpose that no one else can give the world. Own your impact.